Jonathan Baskin, born in Durban, began taking photographs at the age of nine using a simple box camera. Today, his numerous works adorn the walls of many private collections around the world. Over the last two years, he has set out to capture South African landscapes as seen from the skies, adding a fresh perspective to the vast array of environments. By employing aerial photography as his medium, he also seeks to remove the landscape from its popular context and has aptly named his latest exhibition, Abstract by Nature. The exhibition was held at the Association for Visual Arts. It was suggested to me by uh, an erstwhile agent that perhaps I should have an exhibition by way of launching myself prior to uh, pursuing my agents overseas and ultimately the overseas market for this particular form of printmaking, which is what it is. So uh, we went ahead and we had the exhibition and uh, I'm delighted to say it was rather successful. The man who curated on my behalf uh, had a definite philosophy. They were all by and large the same size, same proportion and of the same subjects abstract nature. So his view was that this was one continuous freeze of one picture. And I must say, when I look at these still images, that's definitely how it worked. Jonathan's previous works have placed great onus on the role of the audience to participate in the images that they perceive. In 1984, his monochrome studies of Macau toured extensively in Southeast Asia. Later, his visits to Southwest India yielded two complementary series of photographs entitled India Looking, comprising portraits of the local people, and India Seen, depicting the architecture and decorative aspects of the city itself. His follow-up project, Cape Town Touching the Sky, draws on his expertise in the architectural profession and studies the relationship of the building silhouette with the indigo Cape Town sky. It was at this point that Jonathan would decide to combine two of his greatest loves, photography and flying. Yeah, I started flying many years ago. I'm very pleased I did for a number of reasons and I certainly advise a lot of people um, to hang on keep something for middle age. Not that I was going through a midlife crisis, I was born in a midlife crisis, but uh, it was just something to keep for my late 40s, which I did do. It was predicated on a number of things. A, being able to do something that I felt was unachievable, and B, my innate fear of flying. I've flown most probably a little more than the average man in his lifetime, and I've never really relaxed in the plane, ever. Then luckily, I was introduced to the gyroplane. Gyroplane is basically a very rudimentary rotor wing aircraft and as far as my photography was concerned offered me opportunities which I could never have undertaken as a fixed wing pilot or a helicopter pilot. The gyrocopter allows me to be a pilot photographer. My whole aircraft becomes a video camera and that was a learned skill. It's still quite unnerving to video from the aircraft point the cameras behind you, fly the aircraft forward and have the image and the monitors going backwards. That can be uh, quite distressing and require quite a lot of concentration. But for me, an unprecedented joy to not only have the uh, aircraft at my control but the cameras as well because I'm able to control everything. love at the moment is undoubtedly the Tankwa. I just find that the half dozen times that I've been there, the diversity of colour, form and texture that I come across is constantly intriguing and entrancing. It was partially exhibited uh, in, in this last exhibition, but it's well worthy of an exhibition all of its own. As part of a social responsibility initiative, Jonathan set out to educate the inhabitants of this isolated stretch of the Karoo Desert about the nature of their surroundings. These kids um, live in actually a two-dimensional environment. They live on a desert, on the floor. Mountains are something on the, at the horizon. There's one species of tree because it is a desert. And uh, I was intrigued to know what they saw. 
First of all, they get a lovely box of materials and lovely things to own. And secondly, they get asked to draw what they think I see from the air. In other words, I'm really pushing their envelope of perception because they've got to think about what they call the vurvur, which is my machine, up in the air. They've got to think what I see when I look down. The range of expression that this has given rise to has been absolutely overwhelming. This has got people thinking out of the envelope, as it were. And this I consider a very real spin-off. I get to go up there, I get to interact with them, and they, of course, come away with just a new perception. I was asked who was going to open the exhibition, and a lot of prominent artists in Cape Town were suggested me as uh, openers and drawers of the public, and I decided that uh, the best art critic I knew was, in fact, my brother. Christian Bartelski, French intellectual and visual artist, comments extensively on the true value of photographs. The simple fact of the matter is this, the photographic image is so laden with information that even when distressed or degraded, the veracity of the images shine through. As a result, it is very difficult for an artist to act upon the surface of a photograph in an effort to communicate his or even her ideas. The photograph is documentary, it is true, it is inviolate. These images, however, take the story one massive step further. Nothing in these images is artifact. Nothing has been added, nothing has been taken away. These are an original perspective, untouched by NASA, National Geographic, nor any other cliche-ridden set of references. What you see is what you get with the added value of an astute eye, formed not only by architecture, but a sustained immersion in the deep end of the Western Canada. Yet such is the scale that you, the viewer, are complicit in the construction of meaning. The true joy of this is the serendipitous, is the unplanned. Um, some of my best pictures are taken in the most unphotographic environments, in terms of sun angles, in terms of time of day, in terms of haze, for instance. But somehow, because you're in the plane, if there is a bit of haze, well, you just go around the corner, you get the sun behind you, you angle the camera down, all of a sudden it's working for you. Those peculiar shadows because it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Well, once again, bank the plane, make the shadows appear to be longer than they are. Um, forget which way is up in the image. The whole gamut of possibilities, once you free yourselves from the concept of gravity, the concept of what upness is and downness is, just leaves you free to basically flounder around in the sheer delight of amorphous colour. Uh, a fine example of that is uh, when I went up to Tulbuck doing wine farms. I flew around the valley and then came across just a series of contours which just looked right. I just happened to be at the right angle and the right height. And all I could do is go, oh my God, stick the camera over the side and leave it all up to fate. The amazing thing on coming back and doing the picture, which happens to be one of my favorites, was that it absolutely reflected a painting I'd done about two years ago, the inside of an angel's wing. It got me very uh, philosophical about where the, where the shapes and forms of what one sees in one's head or one perceives really are and one tends to think that there is nothing original, that it's all in nature, you just have to see it. I respond to my audience. I know when I'm onto a good thing when they ask one of two questions. The first one being, where is it? You know, this is abstract by nature, so immediately somebody wants to know where something is, it suggests that they want to go look at it for themselves. So I, I feel that's a positive response. The second one is, what is it? Well, that's also very nice. Uh, because it's abstract, they need something to hone in on to know what it's about and what it is. I was very pleased to have it acknowledged that I was in Africa, using Africa, but with a Western mindset. I applaud his vision, his attention to detail, his capacity to see, to share, to communicate. His images make me proud of our family and give new life to my battered patriots. Thank you. Jonathan believes that his works are milestones in the endless pursuit of beauty. 
and having photographed the entire coast, he intends to travel further inland to collect the rich geographical offerings of the hinterland.